So, um, so here uh, with uh, on uh, Sanity uh, for Sweden's uh, channel, and uh, I'll put a, a link on the Tassos Today channel as well. So, um, uh, Stefan's got over ten thousand. I think it's eleven thousand subscribers now. Congratulations! Uh, Thank you. So, uh, so uh, check out those uh, those videos from Sanity for Sweden. Um, on, on this uh, on this uh, chat that we're having, we've had a, had a, a few already, and we hope to have a few more as well. Um, one of the things that that struck me today, I was looking at a, a, a one of the Fox News channels, and they had a, a, a series of talks and lectures about um, human rights and, and and so on. It was the usual cast of of people. There's several hours of, of different groups and. Uh, uh, and they were all talking about human rights from a very leftist perspective. And uh, the uh, it's straight from central casting, the, the convener who, who was a, a, you know, a hairy armpit lesbian uh, who, who was teaching um, gender studies, was the compare, and then the various people were introduced uh, and all of them were the, the victim. It was a victim Olympics of, of speakers. Uh, one speaker was um, a black, a black, Lesbian, which is a blind. And I don't think it's possible to have more victim points than than that. But but these were the the speakers who were all morally lecturing the the rest of us on on what was correct behaviour. What was interesting though is every single one of these people is being funded by taxpayer dollars. Uh, the the whole they, they they've got a paid space on the the channel. The venue that they're using is paid by taxpayer dollars. Some of these people are being flown around all over the world to morally lecture the rest of us on, on human rights and to insist that we're all on the verge of returning to 1930s fascist Nazism you know, any day now and, and so on. And all these, the cost of doing this, you would run into um, just the few that I looked at, hundreds of thousands of taxpayer dollars. And, and it's just the thought sort of, struck me that if they weren't being funded so handsomely by taxpayer money, we wouldn't even be hearing from them. It's only the taxpayer money that's propping them up. And, and I don't know whether you're seeing the same thing in, in Sweden and around Scandinavia generally. Is it the taxpayer money and, and the NGOs and Soros, but, but is it particularly taxpayer money that's bringing these people their public, uh, their public um, forum, if you like? Yeah, interesting story. Yeah, we have the same thing here in Sweden, of course. It's taxpayers' money who pay for these guys. And, uh, you know, it's quite pathetic. You know, I think we are we have to learn something from this. Because I think uh, if you are portraying yourself as a victim all the time, uh, people will buy it in the beginning. But eventually, people will start to get fed up with it, I think. I've seen, I've seen this myself. Because they just go on and on and on, and I think we we can learn something from this uh, that we ourselves never ever portray ourselves as victims. Uh, it's it can be sort of tempting to do it, or it's, you know it's like the it's a popular thing to do, but uh, it's a trap. If you start to portray yourself as a victim, you start to think as a victim. And I've seen some of this, of course, uh, in the discussions on uh, alternative media, how uh, you know we are victims and so on, but we are really not, and we should not never, never go into this trap. Just I uh, do, just do well, and speak out. You know that's what you should do, and you should uh, earn your income, do well. That's the ticket, I think. Oh yeah, it's, good, good it's despicable behavior. You know, these these people should uh, really uh, be embarrassed if they had a look from another perspective. It's despicable. Oh, it is. Uh, you, you know, I I wonder whether some people ask me, well, what what can we do? There are so many so many things that are going uh, wrong uh, in, in, in the, the view of some people that uh, the feminists seem to be everywhere and the, the media is controlled by the globalists and 
what can we do? Some nice people ask me. And, and I think one of the things is, is uh, go to your local politicians, your local member, whoever's elected to your district or region, and say, look, you have to stop funding these causes. I don't agree that my taxpayer dollars are going to fund you know, blind uh, black lesbians to run around the world uh, um, preaching to the rest of us. Um, you have to stop that and, 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 and spend our taxpayer dollars on things that are you know, better schools, better roads, better infrastructure, uh, better airports and, uh, uh, and so on. And, and these are the things. And, and the, the people, the, the, the elected representatives must become accountable again to the people uh, for, um, for the things they do and the things they support and the, the policies they have. And if they can't give the, the electors an answer, then they just keep on writing politely and respectfully, but keep on writing and keep on asking for meetings in, the, uh, in your local parliamentarian's office and insist that they, they stop funding these, these, uh, these uh, people and these groups and these um, uh, globalists who are determined to uh, reduce our standard of living and, and, and take away our legal rights. And that can be one, one thing. And, and just sort of adding to that, I was driving down the, the, the street of, of the town that I, I live in and there was a big banner that was, that was put up um, saying, uh, um, violence against women, we don't accept it. Uh, and, uh, and fine, you know, well, nothing wrong with that. that that's okay. But, but why is that such a big issue that it requires um, a 30 by, by 5 metre sign in the middle of a town? That would have been expensive to, to put together and taxpayer dollars, ratepayer dollars are paid for that. So I made some inquiries and, uh, and the, the, uh, the local council that put the sign up has recently hired a radical feminist and uh, who's pushing a radical feminist agenda. Part of her salary is being paid by the state government uh, or, the, or the regional government as well. So it's a very coordinated political and, and government uh, initiative. And the studies that they're relying on are produced by a, a lesbian gender studies group from some fourth tier university, which is all, all rubbish. There's no, no proper information there. It's just a, just a cooked, up, uh, cooked up bit of nonsense. So by making inquiries, and they were uncomfortable. I was obviously the only person who made any inquiries. And, and so, uh, but, but uh, my point was, uh, look, I don't agree that my ratepayer dollars are paying for this. If you want to do that, you have to ask. I, I'm not paying or agreeing to pay for activism from a small group of left-wing globalist activists. And, and so we can all go out, wherever we see this, it could be in a doctor's surgery where they've got signs about you know, violence against women or this or that or, or any of these sort of globalist things. And we should, should ask, well, where did this information come from? You know, who's paying for this? And, and, that's, and if the pressure is great enough in the end, these people are either going to have to justify it or stop doing it. Uh, I don't know what it's like where you, but any public building you go to in Australia, any public building is filled with signs about violence against women and racism and Nazis are everywhere and these sorts of things. And it's all nonsense. It's just sowing social division. It's not healing anything. Oh, is it similar in Sweden? Well, I, I agree with you. It doesn't solve anything. Well, we have... About the same, I think. We have uh, media, absolutely. TV, absolutely. We see these guys. And I think people sort of get the impression that these people are everywhere. And this is, that, this is the general opinion. But uh, I think more and more people are realizing that it's not. This is actually a few people you know, gathering together to promote this, to have this propaganda going. And um, if you ask anyone, any Swede, anyone, uh, they will tell you something else. They don't agree with this in general, of course. It's just a media inflated propaganda machine. So, um, well, it's, uh, it's pathetic. Oh, but, it, it, uh, it's changing, though. I, I don't. I think you, you mentioned this in a couple of your videos that that we're all starting to sense that there's a change now. Enough people in the West have had enough, and they're expressing that view and they're expressing their will. And it looks like things could be changing, and, and that the globalists will be on the defensive. And once they're on the defensive, then they have to justify what they've done and 
uh, and I don't think they can because they've got no argument at the end of the day. Uh, and this, this means that, that we could be seeing a change. You, you know, when people start doing these, the groups start doing these things, they, they're ch trying to change society for their own ends, and their own purposes, that they, they think they can control it right the way through to the conclusion. And that's, that's what a lot of people thought. They thought that in the French Revolution. And when, when they called the Estates General meeting, which was to raise taxes in, in May of 1789, everyone thought that the agenda would become the king. The king even turned up to the, the meeting and, uh, and was chatting to the, the various factions in, in the, just before the French Revolution. He had no idea that in, in a short space of time, his head was going to be cut off <laughs> and they right. were all sitting around. But, but once they lose control of the agenda, then it can go in any direction. And that's when the people that started can often themselves end up with their heads on pikes. And, it's, uh, and I think maybe we're witnessing the beginning of something like that now. Yeah, I think so. I see this in Sweden. It's very obvious. They are surprised. And you see this now as they are trying to form a government. Uh, about 90, 95% of their effort is uh, aimed at stopping the nationalists. That's what they talk about. So they are sort of desperate. And I think they are, like the French king, surprised <laughs> what's going on. They have, they have been d using this propaganda for years and years and years. And all their friends were saying the same thing. So they, th they thought this would work, right? And then you see uh, as nationalists go up and up and up and they are going down, they become desperate. So this is all they do now, basically, trying to stop this movement. So of course they are afraid, they are scared, they are desperate. I love well, to witness this. I, I just love to see this happening. You know, the, the the their eyes, the the body language of these people as they become more and more frantic about trying to stop the nationalists, you see. I just love to witness this. And the mistakes they're going to make, they'll start making mistakes and it'll be oh, yeah. more entertaining. <laughs> it's very, it's hilarious to see this. And it's, uh, you know, every day you can see it on the news or in debates or in uh, media articles and so on. It's uh, great fun. Of course, I still get pissed off with what they are doing, but uh, really they are making some outrageous mistakes as they are trying to stop this. And you see it, for instance, the, the two political parties in Sweden that have been working the most trying to stop the nationalists, they are dropping now very quickly. So what can they do? Yeah. Uh, well, what do you think is going to happen here? Do, do you think it's possible that there could be fresh elections? Or, or what do you think is going to happen that, that, that can break the, uh, the, the stalemate? Uh, this is what I think. Uh, they, they will now, next time, this will be in January, this is what I think. They will find a way to form a government. So uh, they will have to compromise somehow. So this will be a globalist, uh, center party, sort of left-wing globalist government in Sweden. So they have to, if they don't uh, agree with each other, there will be a new election in April, I think. So, uh, and they won't, they don't want this, of course, yeah. because they will lose. The, the nationalists will uh, do even better. So they will, they will make a deal. And I say, as I have said in my videos, this is what we need in Sweden. I'm sorry to say this, but this is what we need. We need these guys to govern Sweden some more because it needs to get worse in Sweden before Sweden, the Swedish citizens really start to wake up and act. That's, uh, that's how I see things. So let them get on with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Hey, if... Um... Uh, assuming that they, they sort, sort out some compromises, you say, how many years until the next national Swedish election 
Is it, is it a four or five year term? It's a four year term. Uh, that's a long time uh, when you're waiting for change. But but um, I, I'd be yes. surprised if, if the coalition like this is under put together under such strain and and, and uh, anxiety. I'd be surprised if it lasted the full four years. There's a possibility that it could rupture and and uh, the the. Uh, the, uh, the, there's another election uh, before that. Is it a fixed term in Sweden? Can they go early if they want to in an election? Uh, yeah, if they if they really fuck it up, which they might very well do. But there's another aspect to this, and that is the pressure. In the meanwhile, during these four years, of course, the nationalists will grow because the globalist socialists will make mistakes, as they always do. So, and then there will be pressure from the citizens because these guys, they want to be elected again, of course, after the four years. So they will have to change, you see? Mm -hmm. So things will happen, of course. It's not just the elections. It's, it's a lot what's happening in between elections as well. So, um, yeah. So, but I think it's good if if they can just do their mistakes, fuck it up, as they do, and uh, people will wake up because this is what we need in Sweden. There's just uh, twenty percent of us now that is fairly awake, and uh, we need much much more. We need sixty percent of the Swedish population really uh, knowing what what is happening in this country. You know, and um, voting properly. How, how, how do you think this can happen, given given that the globalists control, well, the major political parties, they control the, the media, they control the what the kids are learning in uh, school, college. How, how do you think it's going to be possible to, to change the minds of, of that many people within a, uh, a short space of time without some sort of major you know, game-changing deal changing sort of event it, it, it's going to be is, is it even possible just through alternative internet media do you think to, to change the minds of that many people yes i think it is but i think what needs to happen is for the population to get poorer and you see this in france uh, france they when they got these terrorist attacks they lit candles right but now when the, they uh, increased the taxes on fuel and the French people were getting poorer, then they actually, they really started to respond to what's going on. So I think this is exactly what needs to happen in Sweden. People need to feel it themselves. Yeah. They read, yeah. They read, they read about the terrorists and they get upset and they read about the raping and they get pissed off but it doesn't affect them personally but if they can't buy the new car you know or if their uh, mother is suffering you see mm. then they will start to wake up and i think that needs to happen i'm sorry that's how it is people it, are it's... people are too too brainwashed they are too uh relaxed you know they they get to to buy whatever they want and so on so uh, this needs to happen in sweden you know it was it was uh, a, a lot of people think it was the french revolution was about um, liberty and equality that that's nonsense um, it, it ended up those were some talking points they used but the reality what tipped it over the edge was uh, the there was a very poor harvest in in uh, uh, wheat and grain harvest in, in France uh, in uh, in the, those years or two years I think in a row, and that's what tipped it over the edge in the end. Um, the there were large groups of people that were marching on government buildings, and, and there's a French word and I can't remember what it is now. Uh, there was two. There was a, what's called sans culotte, meaning uh, without socks or, or without stockings, and there was a women's group, and uh, they they went up to. Uh, uh, a large, uh, a large march. I think it was thousands of women went to um, one of the government buildings, and the uh, the, um, uh, the the government official uh, came out to make a speech, and 
and that the women said, uh, and it sits in the history, uh, we, we don't give a fuck about your speeches, give us bread. And, and that was what, uh, that was it. And then, of course, the, with the bad harvest, the French state was broke at the time. They couldn't afford to import the grain that they they needed. And um, there was a lot of maladministration too. But that was it. That's the bit that pushed it over the edge. And, and later on, they were talking about you know, equality and everything, but uh, but that that wasn't that people were just hungry. They, they just had enough and, and they were hungry. And, and it's as you say, but when it gets that personal, when it comes right into your, your own kitchen and your own uh, lounge room, that's when you decide you have to act. And, and it could be, as you say, maybe maybe times have got to get really bad for some of the people before they, uh, yeah. they see the light. Um, so, uh, so, yeah. We see, we see this with the, the EU now. Uh, you know the the pay race that they are <laughs> they decided for themselves uh, the eu commission they got a, a very nice pay race uh, thanks to themselves and if people are getting poorer then those who govern are getting richer you know people uh, get yeah, this, yeah. people who get really really angry so um there's a lot of talk about uh, Macron um, should should just stand down, and, and I don't know. People seem to think he's like a prime minister who can just walk out of the job or something. But but it's actually different. There's a he's he's uh, elected for a fixed seven year term in in, uh, in France as the as the president, and it's quite a long term. But but given uh, seven years, you know, most of the four years, say in the case of the US, or maybe five years, but seven years is a long one. And this was done to try and give the French political system some stability. Um, so it's not that easy for Macron to, to, to just walk out of the job. He could appoint uh, Marine Le Pen as prime minister. I don't think he will, by the way, but, but, but technically he could do that. And, and, um, and that may, uh, may calm things down a little bit. But, but he's kind of in a no-win situation. But if he just resigns the presidency um, and they've got to do fresh elections, Maybe maybe someone's appointed as an interim. That, that's probably going to to be um, you know a huge watershed in in French politics. And once those sort of precedents are set, you know, anything becomes possible, and, and things could head in any direction. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what uh, what happens in France there with uh, Macron. I doubt he'll stand down, but 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 again, we'll see what uh, what happens. But when you've got an approval rating of I don't know, was it 18% or something? Yeah, 18. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, yeah. He's, got a, he's got a public image problem that he needs to do something about. And I don't think he can fix it. It's too late for that now. Oh, so, uh, uh, it gives uh, you hope, though. This, is, that, this gives me a lot of hope. Uh, you know, when democracy is sort of not working. They, they elected this leader and he fucks with them, basically. It's a democracy problem too, isn't it? And we yeah. have the same thing in, in all over Europe with the, the EU. Uh, democracy, is, democracy is, I think, the hope that people have. This uh, idea that we can vote somebody off who is not doing a proper job. So when you start, as EU has been doing, when you start to uh, rig democracy, and uh, make it something else that's even worse so we have yeah, a very yeah. it's it's a very it's a dangerous situation that we have in europe right now i think people are well, starting it, to get poorer they are starting to get pissed off we have these bureaucrats with their high salaries and then on top of it all we have a democracy that isn't really a democracy so this is dangerous stuff it is, and between 1960, uh, very few people saw it. I mean, I didn't at the time. Between, say, 1965 and maybe 1985, in that 20 years, all the the major parties in the Western uh, nations, uh, Western white nations, all were taken over by globalists, and, and it was a slow sort of process, and it wasn't fully completed, I think, until the Berlin wall came down and the Soviet Union collapsed. So we're talking about the early 90s before that end game played out. And, uh, and and nobody really saw it. There are a few things that were concerning the way that jurisprudence was changing, that, um, you know, this equal outcome uh, laws uh, and, and things like that. Uh, so there were some signs there as we went along. Yeah, 
Ronald Reagan uh, giving the uh, illegal aliens amnesty in the, the United States um, in the early 80s and so on. There, there were all signs there, but, but particularly the left-wing political parties began to um, embrace cap partly at least capitalist economics along with the conservative parties. And that, that really left the ground vacant. So the globalists ended up owning both of those major parties. And it's something that's, that's continued to, in fact, got worse to this very day. And it's, it's incredible that somebody like Donald Trump could actually come along. Imagine what things would be like if he hadn't come along. Um, and, uh, and he's been a game changer just in his own right. And the way they viciously attack him all the time, it means he's doing a good job as far as I can tell. <laughs> and I hope he continues to do it. And pulling troops out of Syria was a good move. Um, and I, and you know, well, I hope at least that, that he makes more moves like that and, and, and gets the wall. Just coming back to, you mentioned about the salaries on the, uh, in the uh, European uh, Commission and so on, or the increase in salaries. I used to do a lot of business traveling uh, a while ago and, and Brussels was a place that I had to go to. And, and uh, and, and down, downtown in Brussels, Brussels isn't that big a city, but but in the downtown area, there's there's cafes like the Falstaff Cafe and around there in the Papyrus area, and that's where all the uh, you know the the flunkies from the European Parliament hang out, and uh, and and I would go there, and and, and uh, you know there'd be always be a bunch of people there who were ready for a drink and. Um, and uh, you know, a bit of uh, schnapps and all that sort of stuff, and and uh, like they, they all had these very generous expense accounts, and 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 you know, being their own business, I had a decent expense. What I thought was decent, it was nothing compared to those guys. <laughs> they, were, they had some serious money to throw around, right? and even at the time, I was thinking, well, I don't mind sort of joining in the frivolity here, but but this is taxpayer money, guys. Don't you care? And, no, they didn't. <laughs> and it looks like nothing's changed. They, they're still the same. In fact, it's even more generous now based on uh, on, on what I'm uh, what I'm hearing. So, yeah, um, it's fantastic. Yeah, I just wish for these guys to go, and that the truth will come out properly. And there's more and more talk about this, of course. And this yeah. is, a, you know, we see in Sweden. The UK is a good example, I think. Uh, how they they have these two major parties, the Labour and the Conservatives, and uh, when people voted for UKIP, UKIP, they got some change for real. And now these guys, these assholes in the Parliament, are trying to stop it. This is also a very dangerous situation, and uh, you know when people don't feel that they have a voice. Things yeah, will happen. Uh, I, I don't know if there's going to be some sort of, uh, and I, I can't see an insurrection occurring or, or, or something that's um, that, but, but the situation appears to be very close to volatile now. And, and once once that's reached, you only need one mistake to be made, a, a, a nervous police officer to shoot somebody, or you know, though something like that. And, and before you know it, it's turned into a, a, a full-blown you know, conflagration. And, uh, uh, and, and maybe maybe those sorts of things are, are inevitable based on on the way events seem to be moving to to a collision point. I hope it doesn't, and, and uh, would advise anyone against that who's thinking it. But but it, it's not impossible. We can't rule it out. And, and some people are even postulating that it's likely uh, that that there will be some sort of conflict, and and that's uh, you know that's deeply concerning. But but again, not surprising given given how the globalists are constantly overplaying their hand. And, uh, and and maybe maybe it needs that to be resolved, but, but let's hope not. Yeah, I I like this awakening that I see in the UK and France. It's it's brilliant. I'm I'm a bit uh, sad about Sweden that uh, it's taking so long. I mean, I want it to go faster, of course, but uh, the Swedes still have such a good life in general. So um, we'll see. I hope we'll see. something's going to happen here. Um, now, uh, as Sanity for Sweden and TASIS today are looking at, at doing some more of these videos. Um, so uh, in your comments below, uh, please make some suggestions and, 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 uh, and give us some pointers and any ideas or even topics that you'd like to see covered. And, and let's, uh, let's see how we go. But um, 
But yeah, uh, thanks everybody for joining and, and, and thanks very much, Sanity. Well, thank you, Tacitus. It was an honor. Talk to you again. Talk soon. Bye now. All right.